Well, hey there, entrepreneurs. Welcome to 30 Days of the Canon M50. If you haven't already downloaded the free PDF guide on the first video, that's just about a minute long, make sure you go back to the beginning of the series, get that free PDF on the best settings for video for the Canon M50. But otherwise, let's jump into today's video. So one of the things I think is really neat with the Canon M50 Creator Kit is that they give you a memory card. Now, I really like this memory card for photos, but otherwise for video, it's some issues with it. So I don't recommend that you use it, but today I'm gonna give you some recommendations on what to do with it and what's actually wrong with this card. Okay, so before we jump really, really deep into this, just know I'm gonna be covering some technical settings and some things to know about memory cards. And just, just so that you have it to understand it, it may be uh, a while before it really sinks in because it took me a while to kind of really get and understand some of the technical aspects of it. But we'll keep it pretty simple, but just know that you're gonna to wanna to get a different one. So the card that comes with the Canon M50 is the SanDisk Ultra card. It has this 80 megabytes per second, um, which is actually the read speed. It's not the write speed, which is W-R-I-T-E, <laughs> the, the speed that it actually writes to the card. And as you can see on the card, it has this U1 symbol. And the U1 is gonna be different than what you actually need for videos, especially for K video. When you put this card in your camera, it will break up your video files into seven minutes, eight minutes, 11 minutes, and it just gets berserk. Now, I already had a card very similar to this. The only thing is that it's a SanDisk Ultra Plus, and it has all of the same feature sets, except that you get a little bit uh, longer you know, videos, but it still breaks it up into like 18 and 11 minutes when it comes to recording the 30 minute videos on the Canon M50. So I don't like using this card at all when it comes to, at least in the Canon M50, it works fine in my point and shoot camera, but it's just not quite powerful enough. So I wanna go over some of the settings that's wrong with the card real quick. So let's dive in. So the U1 has a, a guaranteed minimum transfer rate of 10 megabytes per second. The U3 cards that I recommend that you use with the M50 is get, going to get you a guaranteed minimum transfer rate of 30 megabytes per second. Okay, so here's this technical part that I was telling you about. Okay, so with the U1, again, we're talking megabytes per second, that's the capital M, capital B, and megabits per second is going to be <laughs> capital M, lowercase b p s okay you're with me don't don't get don't feel lost it only lasts a second all right so there are eight bits in one byte so eight bits times 10 bytes equal 80 megabytes per second now with that being said for eight bits times 30 bytes that's 240 megabytes per second and it'll be 30 percent faster then the eight bits times the 10 bytes, that'll give you 80 megabytes per second. So what that basically means is that the cards that I recommend, which is the SanDisk Extreme, or if you wanna get a SanDisk Extreme Pro like I use, what that means is gonna to write to the cards faster so it doesn't have to break your files up. And that's really kind of dangerous when you're recording solo you don't have a lot of time to spend recording content over and over again. You already have to factor in, you know, maybe messing up, slurring over your words and stuff, or dropping the cards like I did today. I already reshot this video. And so, you know, there are things that just happen already. Last thing you want to do is get the video files from the card to the computer and you find out that a certain part was cut off or it split the video files up on top of you already starting and stopping different recording uh, sessions or you know different parts of the video by yourself and it just makes for a messy editing session. Another thing that you'll see on memory cards is the SDHC and the SDXC. Another little bit of a technical part, but this one's not as bad as the last one. So with the SDXC, excuse me, the SDXC, the XC is for extended capacity and the high C is for high capacity. So SD XC cards, like the one that I'm telling you about now, the Sandus Extreme Pro, those will be uh, starting at 64 gigabytes. And then the HC, SD HC, you'll see those go up to 32 gigabytes. Basically, again, when it all breaks down at the end of the day, you're gonna get a better 
more durable sometimes these cards have some type of weatherproofing or splash proof or something like that they'll work a little bit better and the read and write speeds will be better as well so how fast the information is going from the video being recorded from the processor and all the other stuff that goes into the camera writing the information to the card is one speed and then you have those read speeds like when you plug it in to the computer you want to make sure that it's actually able to read that information back as fast as it needs to to pull it into your editing software to upload stuff from the card and all kinds of stuff and if you use uh, a card that can't handle 4k video or even some of the 1080p videos because the test that i did with these cards was 1080p 24 frames per second and when i did a 4k video on my um, g85 and i tried to upload it it just it completely fell apart so this can happen with memory cards it can happen if you have a slow external hard drive that you're trying to uh, you know pull video files from and edit from that so it's bound to happen if you're using slower you know type cards or memory systems or whatever so just make sure you get something if you're going to use the 4k or even just the regular 1080p video files save yourself a headache in the future and just use a good memory card so hopefully that helps you with picking out a better memory card so my recommendation just use the sandisk extreme pro or the sandisk extreme cards that have the u3 Typically, I wanna stay away from any unfamiliar brands. I'll stick with SanDisk, Sony. Um, I've not really tried the PNY or anything like that. I just pretty much try to stick with SanDisk cards. The SanDisk Extreme or the SanDisk Pro uh, or something like that, but it has to be that U3 V30 or V60 uh, that's for video and all the settings that come with it. You can do your research on that, but you want it to at least be a class 10 card with that V30 on it if it's one of the newer ones and make sure it has the U3, not the U1. Recommendations will be down in the description.